In this video, we'll be discussing kinematics. This is the study of motion of objects without considering the forces that cause the motion. Before introducing Suvat equations, let's go over the basics. Velocity, or V, is the rate of change of displacement. The equation for this is V equals delta S over delta T. The acceleration, or A, is the rate of change of velocity. The equation for this is A equals delta V over delta T. Note that the triangles in the equation, or delta, represents the change in, like delta S over delta T means the change in displacement over the change in time. Let's have a look at a few graphical representations of this. We have a car that is moving at a constant velocity of V meters per second to the right. If we draw this motion on a displacement time graph, we get a linear graph where the gradient gives you the velocity. And since the velocity is constant, the gradient will also be a constant. We can see that this is true from the straight line. As we've said, the car is moving at a constant velocity. This means that there is no acceleration through the motion. If we drew the equivalent velocity time graph, we would see a straight horizontal line. There is no acceleration here, therefore the gradient would be zero. This makes sense because there is no acceleration when an object is moving at a constant velocity. Now let's say that there's a car traveling at v meters per second to the right, but this time with a constant acceleration. Note that the acceleration is represented using a double arrow, pointing in the direction of its motion. If an object is accelerating, our displacement time graph will show a curve, curving upwards. You can see that the gradient changes over time. If you wanted to find the velocity of the car at a given point, you can do this by drawing a tangent at the point and then calculating its gradient. If we have a look at the equivalent velocity time graph, we will get a straight line. This is because we are assuming that the acceleration is constant. If the acceleration isn't constant, we would see a curve. We can find the acceleration by calculating the gradient. Because the equation for a velocity is a change in displacement over the change in time, the area under the velocity time graph is equivalent to the displacement. By rearranging the equation to make displacement the subject, we get delta S equals V multiplied by delta T, which is basically the area under the velocity time graph. The area under the first graph is a change in displacement of car A and the second car B. Now let's move on to Suvat equations. Before we begin, there is a key assumption we must make. Suvat equations can only be applied to objects that are moving with a constant acceleration. Consider a falling motion. We know that an object under free fall is experiencing a constant acceleration, which is caused by the Earth's gravity. So, again, the assumption we must make is that acceleration is constant. But you should note that g is only constant near the Earth's surface. Let's go through the derivation of Suvat equations. As we went through earlier, acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. Since we can write the change in velocity, or delta v, as v minus u, the equation can be written as a equals v minus u over delta t, where v and u are the final and initial velocities. If we rearrange the equation so that velocity becomes the subject, we get v equals u plus a t. This is our first Suvat equation. Pause the video and try this for yourself. Make sure you know how to do this. Okay, let's draw a graphical representation of this equation. Say we have an object with an initial velocity of u meters per second, a final velocity of v meters per second, under a constant acceleration of a meters per second squared. In this velocity time graph, the red line represents the motion of the object. Again, the line is a straight line as acceleration is constant. If we separate the area into two parts, shown by the blue lines, we can see that the triangle's area can be found by calculating v minus u, which is basically the height of the triangle, then multiply that by t, the length, and then divide it all by 2. The area of the rectangle can be found by simply multiplying u and t. To find the total displacement, we must add the two areas together. 
which gives us S equals UT plus V minus U multiplied by T divided by 2. Now by substituting the V with the equation 1's V equals U plus AT, we get our second equation UT plus half AT squared. If we rearrange the first line of our second equation for displacement, we get given our third equation S equals U plus V over 2 multiplied by T. Now let's square equation 1 and substitute equation 2. So if we square V equals U plus AT, we get U squared plus 2AUT plus A squared T squared. We can simplify this down to U squared plus 2A brackets UT plus AT squared over 2. Here we can see that the bracketed section is equivalent to the displacement equation number 2. We can now substitute equation 2 to get our fourth equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as. As we know, SUVAT has five variables, where s is displacement, u is initial velocity, v final velocity, a acceleration, and t time. We have a total of four SUVAT equations, and each of them has four variables to work with. Each equation has one missing variable, which means that if you can gather three SUVAT variables, you can use the equations to find the unknown fourth value. Note that in SUVAT, we also assume that air resistance is negligible. This is because if there were air resistance, the acceleration would not be constant. These SUVAT equations will be provided in the formula booklets, so you don't necessarily need to memorize them. However, doing so can help you for quicker recognition and save you time searching for it. Let's go through a few examples. In example 1, we'll be working with horizontal motion. First, let's draw the axes to show that we are taking up and the right hand side as the positive. We have a car that is accelerating to the right. The initial velocity at t equals 0 is 2 meters per second. After a certain time, at t equals 10, its final velocity is at 14 meters per second, still moving to the right. So, what would the displacement and acceleration of this car be? To begin with, let's write SUVAT vertically as we fill in the values for what we know. We don't know the displacement, as this is what we are looking for. We know the initial velocity at 2 meters per second. We know the final velocity, which is 14 meters per second. Acceleration, again, this is unknown, but we do know that it will be constant. And finally, t, the time elapsed, which is 10 seconds. So we have three known variables. In this case, the equation v equals u plus at contains all the variables required to calculate the acceleration. Now, if we substitute the values, we get 14 equals 2 plus a multiplied by 10, which would give us 12 over 10, or 1.2 meters per second squared. Now, to find a displacement, we can use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Let's substitute the values. This would give us 14 squared equals 2 squared plus 2 times 1.2 times s. Simplify and rearrange to get 196 minus 4 divided by 2.4, which results to 80 meters. You can pause the video and check that this all makes sense. Moving on to example 2, we will be working with vertical motion. Let's draw the axes to show that up and the right hand side is the positive. We have a ball that has been kicked vertically upwards. Since the ball is moving vertically, there will be a constant acceleration, or in this case, a deceleration caused by the Earth's gravity of 9.81 meters per second squared. Note that the gravity will always act downwards. At t equals 0, the initial velocity is 10 meters per second and is decelerating at 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, we want to find the maximum height of the ball and the time taken to reach its maximum height. Okay, so the ball being kicked vertically upwards. At the highest point of the ball's travel, it will momentarily be stationary, and its velocity becomes zero. 
This is the case for any object that is fired vertically upwards. As gravity is acting vertically downward, the object will eventually come to a rest before falling back down. Now we can write out the SUVAT variables. We don't know the displacement as this is what we are looking for. Initial velocity is 10 meters per second, and as we mentioned earlier, the final velocity, which is at the greatest height of the ball, is 0 meters per second. Since the ball is moving upwards and the gravity acts downwards, the acceleration will be minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Finally, t. This is also an unknown to find. Here we have three known variables, which means we can use the equations to find the unknown variables. To begin with, we can use v equals u plus a t to find time, as we have all the variables that satisfy that equation with t as the unknown. By substituting the values, we get 0 equals 10 plus minus 9.81 multiplied by t. This brings us to t equals 10 over 9.81, or 1.02 seconds, to three significant figures. Now, using a similar approach, can you show that the displacement, or the highest point, is 5.10 meters to three significant figures? Can you also show that the time taken for the ball to reach the ground again is t equals 2.04 seconds to three significant figures? You can pause the video and have a go. Quick tip, you can work with the after picture so that the u equals 10 and v equals minus 10. Then use SUVAT equations to work it out. Or assume by symmetry that the time taken for the ball to reach its highest point is equal to the time taken for the ball to reach the ground from its highest point. In example 3, we will be working with a projectile motion. Projectile motions have both vertical and horizontal motions. So here we are asked to find the range of the ball with an initial velocity of 5 meters per second at an angle of 50 degrees from the horizontal. If you don't know, the range means the total distance traveled by the ball. We can imagine a ball being kicked at 5 meters per second, 50 degrees from the horizontal. Firstly, let's draw some axes. Since the ball is being kicked at an angle, we must resolve it into its horizontal and vertical components. If you don't know how to do this, refer back to our scalars, vectors and static equilibriums video for a comprehensive overview. The link will be provided in the description below. So, the acceleration is moving downward at 9.81 meters per second squared, which is indicated by the double arrows. If we were to draw the motion of the ball, represented by the grey curve, it travels through a parabolic path. Ok, now to calculate the horizontal and vertical components, we draw them head to tail and use so katoa. In this case, we use v cos theta for the horizontal and v sine theta for the vertical. An important thing to remember in a projectile motion is that there is a common variable between the vertical and horizontal motion, and that is the time. Although the motions can be considered independent to each other, they both start and end at the same time. If a ball is thrown horizontally from a certain height, it will reach the ground at the same time as a ball if it was just dropped vertically from the same height. This is why the time can be transferred as the motions in both vertical and horizontal direction happen during the same time period. Now that we have the vertical and horizontal components, use SUVAT and fill in the missing values. Remember that we are working in degrees and not radians. Always start with the vertical motion since this is where the acceleration is. So, we have a displacement as zero since the object's final vertical position returns to where it started. Remember that the displacement is a vector. Then we have u as 5 sine 50 degrees meters per second, v as an unknown, a is minus 9.81 meters per second squared, and t is another unknown. To calculate the time, we can use s equals ut plus half a t squared. Substitute the values to get 0 equals 5t sine 50 degrees plus negative 9.81t squared over 2. We then rearrange to make t the subject, which is 5 sine 50 divided by 9.81 over 2, or 0 0.781 seconds to three significant figures. Now working horizontally, 
Displacement is unknown as it is what we are looking for. Both the initial and final velocity are 5 cos 50 degrees as air resistance is negligible. Acceleration equals zero and we can transfer the t from the vertical motion, so 0 0.781 seconds. To calculate the displacement, we can use s equals ut since the acceleration is zero. This gives us 5 cos 50 multiplied by 0 0.781, which is 2.51 meters to three significant figures. In example 4, we are asked to find the distance travelled by the ball with an initial horizontal velocity of 5 meters per second. Also calculate the final resultant velocity as it hits the ground. We must also state the direction. Ok, so this time we have an object that is on the table 1 meter above the ground. We can draw this axis to show that up and right is the positive. We can label the horizontal velocity marked in red and we have a vertical acceleration of g, 9.81 meters per second squared, acting downwards. Let's have a look at the motion of the ball. The question indicates that the initial velocity is horizontal only. This would mean that the y component is zero. Again, we need to calculate the flight time of the ball by considering the vertical motion first. Displacement would be minus one meters as the object is one meter below the initial position. U is zero meters per second, and as we mentioned, V is an unknown. A is minus 9.81 meters per second squared, and T also an unknown. In this case, we took up as positive, so the displacement and acceleration is negative. However, there is no issue taking down as a positive, which would make the displacement and acceleration positive. You must make sure that you are consistent throughout the question. Ok, getting back to the question, to calculate the time, we can use s equals ut plus half at squared. Substitute the values and we get minus 1 equals 0 plus minus 9.81 times t squared divided by 2. This gives us 0 0.452 seconds to three significant figures. Now using v equals u plus at, we can find the final horizontal velocity, which is 0 plus minus 9.81 times 0 0.452, giving us minus 4.43 meters per second. So the magnitude of the final velocity is 4.43 meters per second. Moving on to the horizontal motion, displacement is the unknown we are looking for. Again, u and v are both 5 meters per second since there is no air resistance. Acceleration is 0 with t as 0 0.452 seconds. Here, since acceleration is 0, we can use s equals ut. This gives us 5 times 0 0.452, which results to 2.26 meters to three significant figures. Remember that this is the horizontal displacement of the ball or how far away the ball has landed on the ground relative to the table. Now that we have both vertical and horizontal velocities, we can find the resultant velocity using Pythagoras' theorem, giving us 5 squared plus 4.43 squared, then we square root, which gives us 6.68 meters per second. We need to find the direction at which the ball hits the ground, and we can do this by using Sokatoa. Here we use tan theta equals 4.43 over 5, and by inversing we get theta equals arctan 4.43 over 5, giving us 41.5 degrees from the horizontal. Pause the video to check that you understand. Now for a question. Find the time taken and the range of the ball which is placed on a table of height 1.2 meters where the initial velocity of the ball is 5 meters per second at an angle of 50 degrees from the horizontal. You are asked to find the time and distance traveled by the ball placed on a table of height 1.2 meters given that the initial velocity is 5 meters per second at an angle of 50 degrees from the horizontal. This means that it has both x and y components. Using everything that we've just gone through, can you show that a, the time of the flight is 1.02 seconds, and b, the range is 3.28 meters? Pause the video, have a go, and see if you get the same answer. 
If you are unsure about something or you have a question, please leave a comment below. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more.